One, go. Careful. What are you doing? Are you okay? Hello and welcome to another Power Drifting bonus stage. Bonus stage is the shorter version of our podcast where either myself, Tom, or Mike does do a bit of a, a monologue about a particular game that we have played or one that we think is worthy of discussion. At this time, I will be discussing a rather late PlayStation 1 release called WRC Arcade. Three, two, one, go! Easy right. Easy left. So WRC Arcade was developed by a studio called Unique Development Studios, or UDS. Uh, They're now defunct, uh, but they're also the same developer who were responsible for Snowcross Championship on the Dreamcast, and also No Fear Downhill Mountain Biking, which was a previous PlayStation 1 title. WRC Arcade was actually released in 2002, August 2002 to be precise, uh, which was quite some time after the release of the PlayStation 2, and the Dreamcast had been and gone by that point. So, as I said, quite a late game for the PlayStation. I think the last game for the PlayStation came out in like 2005 or something, so not really like the, like the final, one of the final games, but still the PlayStation 2 had already kicked into gear. And there'd already been a WRC game released on the PlayStation 2. That was WRC, uh, which was released in November 2001. That's the one that was developed by Evolution Studios. Now, WRC Arcade is actually the only game on the PlayStation 1 that's got the official WRC license. Obviously, there are tons of different rally games, but none of them have got the WRC name in them or as part of the title. And as we know now, in 2020, there are tons of different WRC games from different developers spanning several generations. So this was quite early doors, really, for the WRC license. It looks like, for all intents and purposes, WRC Arcade was kind of like a like the sandwich filling between two uh, more marquee releases. So I previously mentioned WRC on the PlayStation 2 by Evolution Studios. Only a few months later, WRC 2 Extreme from the same developer was released on the PlayStation 2. And it's almost as if Sony were kind of saying, if you've still got a PlayStation, we've not forgotten about you, here's a WRC game, but it's not the kind of the full fat experience. It's, It's a, as the name suggests, an arcade experience. What does that mean exactly? So the game features seven vehicles. Um, they are the Ford Focus, the Hyundai Accent, Citroen Zara, Mitsubishi Lancer Revolution, Peugeot 206, Skoda Octavia, and the Subaru Impreza. And it only has 14 tracks. I say only because most WRC games, if you are familiar with the genre, have you know multiple countries with multiple special stages within each country. Here, all we have are 14 tracks, one from each country. Incidentally, each country, or rather the countries in this game, are from the 2002 WRC Championship. So you have Australia, Spain, Cyprus, Kenya, Germany, Argentina, France, New Zealand, Sweden, Italy, Greece, Finland, Monte Carlo, Great Britain, and a bonus track. Now, the bonus track is kind of dangled in front of your face when you first start the game as this kind of mysterious, oh, I wonder what it could be. Uh, there are some games such as things like Cruising, Cruising World, I believe it is, or Cruising Exotica, where you've got these ridiculous stages so that you can go to the moon and that kind of thing. Here, it's just a nice bimble through the countryside with a castle. I don't know what, why they thought that was a great environment to have a bonus stage. I was expecting something like, you know, some you know maybe going through some caves or something, but no, it's just a nice little jaunt through the countryside, so don't get your hopes up. Maybe should have given a spoiler alert before I revealed that, but uh, yeah, if you've not played WRC yet, uh, you've had 20 years, or the best part of 20 years, so uh, get on that. (laughs) Right, game modes. There are four main game modes in WRC Arcade. Uh, The Super Special, which is the basic arcade mode, which is split into three difficulties, each with its own number of tracks. So you've got Easy, Medium and Hard. Easy has four tracks, Medium has six, and Hard has eight. Now, in the super special mode, or the arcade mode as I'm going to call it, you start at the back of the pack, and depending on the difficulty, it depends on how many cars you need to overtake. It's kind of like Sega Rally, in that you start at the back of the pack, there's a timer, you drive from point A to point B to point C to point D, going through the checkpoints, getting more time, and overtaking cars that are going a bit slower than you are across the course. 
And yeah, that's pretty much what you do in, in the arcade mode. More interestingly for me is the, the grid race. So you've basically got every single car down one side of the grid and every single track across the top. And it's almost like a matrix. And you select which car you want and then which course you want to race on. And you are then pitted against three AI vehicles in a kind of a straight race. So you all start in a grid and you race to the end of the course. And whoever comes first gets, you know, the gold medal, second silver, third bronze. And once you once you kind of get a medal for that course, it is placed in the grid. So you you have got quite a lot of challenge there. There's a lot of car, you know, we've got the seven cars across the 14 courses. I don't know what the maths are on that. You do the math. Once you get a medal, it kind of fills in the little square that is that cross section of the, of the grid. Um, once you get all golds, I haven't done this, by the way. I've checked it out on YouTube. I've cheated. Um, once you get all golds, you get the uh, the added bonus of be able to do the entire thing in reverse. So yeah, plenty of longevity there in that mode. <laughs> you also get time trial, which is just you against the clock, and there's a versus mode, which is for two players. Easy right. Checkpoint. Medium right. Medium left. Okay, so uh, I've talked a little bit about the actual game, you know, in a factual sense, you know, what you get for your money. But I'm going to talk a little bit about my opinions now. Uh, and I'm going to look at the positives and the negatives for this game. Uh, as I say, it was quite a late release on the PlayStation. And so positives are that it does actually look quite good for a PlayStation 1 game. The cars are all well modelled. They look pretty accurate. And there are some pretty good weather effects uh, there is a negative attached to the weather effects, which I'll come on to shortly. But yeah, for the main, it looks pretty solid. The courses are all quite bendy, even though they're not actually based on real-world special stages. As I said, each course is just one track from one particular country. And because they're also bendy, there isn't really, there isn't really the, the opportunity for the game to like display any popping. Obviously, it exists in places, but it's just not very apparent because the courses are so windy. Uh, there's a good uh, good range of different surfaces that you can race on, and each one has its own characteristics, so they'll make the cars handle in a different way. For example, if you're on tarmac and then go on to gravel or mud or snow, then there is a definite change in the way that the car handles. The, the courses themselves as well do have some quite nice details. There's helicopters flying overhead. You know, There's a lot of trackside details that are specific to that environment uh, some nice kind of forest areas with lots of trees and then you can go into like little villages and yeah it all looks pretty nice obviously it's a playstation 1 game so it's not going to look as good as a current gen title and you know it can look quite pixelated on a, a modern tv so if you've got a crt knocking about probably play it on that i tried playing it on my big 4k tv and it looked like a mess so plug it into a uh, get your playstation out or your ps2 put it on a crt and it looks all right uh, the gameplay is quite simple I believe this game is actually aimed at a younger audience, or rather the UDS website, which I look at using the Wayback Machine, says that it's you know got simple gameplay. I do have some gripes with the gameplay, which I'll come on to when I come on to the negatives, but for the most part, it does handle quite well. The cars do have different characteristics. You know, they've all got different stats. Some of them handle better than others. You know, it's, it's almost like a cross between Colin McRae and a little bit of Sega Rally, the, the the cars they're quite loose going around corners. But once you get you know once you get the hang of it, it, it can be uh, can be quite good fun just kind of sliding around these uh, three chicanes around corners. So yeah, it's pretty simple to get into. Quite easy to just kind of jump into to any of the game modes and you 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 race in within a couple of minutes. You know, there's not a lot of customization. It's just like what do you want to do? What do you want to play? It which course do you want to go on? Which car do you want? Here you go, crack on. And so, yeah, it's uh, it's very easy to just kind of pick up and play. And one thing that I think is worth a very brief mention is the, the way that you can customise the controls. I know in a lot of games you can go into the options menu and you can choose between different control schemes, so you'll have like presets and whatnot. But this one, uh, it has a thing called free mode where you can basically put any of the controls on any of the buttons on the, on the control pad. So, you know, if you want accelerate on like the up button, on the on the d-pad you can not sure why you'd want to do that but it's nice to have the option uh, likewise you can put like accelerate and brake on the triggers if you want 
I was actually playing this game on the PlayStation 2 through the emulation mode. I do have a, a, a standard PS1, but it's in a cupboard somewhere, so I didn't dig it out. But it's nice that you've got the option to just kind of put the uh, whatever controls you want on whatever buttons you like on the, on the control pad. Easy left, easy right. Long, easy right. Jump. Right, going to move on to some negatives now. Um, first and foremost, this is a definite. The music is awful. When you start playing it, you'll just get this kind of supermarket music drilling into your brain as you play. You're like, what? what? Why am I listening to this? It's awful. Turn it off. Just turn it off or basically put the TV on mute because the music is horrendous. Right. Um, the weather can't be altered so when you choose a track the weather is kind of set for that course um so for example in sweden it's it's variable so sometimes it'll be snowing sometimes it won't but in finland it's always a storm so you can't race in finland without it being a storm with thunder and lightning going off uh, likewise in like kenya it's always sunny so that's that's a bit of an annoyance and that kind of filters down into the cars as well because you can't actually edit any of the the setup so you you basically you, you're stuck with what you've got. There's no customization at all when it comes to the uh, the car setup. So you, you can't play with the suspension, you can't play with the steering, nothing like that. Uh, there are only three camera angles and none of them actually feel right, if that makes sense. Um, the, the, the default camera angle feels too close to the car. The other external view feels too far away, too zoomed out. And then the internal camera is basically just the bumper cam. There's no bonnet cam or internal cockpit view or anything like that. So you're basically just kind of looking at the at the environment from the, the bottom of the bumper of the car. So the, the, the three camera modes, they're not ideal. You know, they're usable, serviceable, if that's what you want to call it, but they're not, they're not the best. Uh, there's no damage, unlike in most other rally games, even of this era, uh, there's no damage. It didn't affect things in Sega Rally, and that's kind of what this game is going for, I think. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit disappointing that there's no damage model, especially when you consider how bad the AI is in this game. The the competitor cars will basically just stick to a racing line. They will slam into you and sort of smash you out of the way if you're in their path. They don't seem to know that you're there. And obviously this is a PlayStation 1 game, so you wouldn't expect really advanced AI routines. But, you know, it can be a bit annoying when these cars are just kind of blasting you out of the way when you, uh, you manage to have the audacity to get in their path. Uh, again, lack of real stages and drivers. Even though it's got the WRC license, there's no drivers it's just got the cars and the locations and some of the branding around the courses so there's no actual real world drivers or anything like that and the the pace notes as well again because it's a it's aiming for the arcade end of the spectrum it's just things like easy right easy left you know over bump again taking cues from from sega rally i would imagine one of the final negatives is that the the handling even though i mentioned earlier that it's quite kind of intuitive and it almost has leanings towards the mccray end of the of the spectrum it can be a bit inconsistent because some cars feel really twitchy and others don't. And there's this tendency to, I'll, I'll try and explain this best I can. If you are drifting around the corner, you will find that you need to kind of course correct because you'll find yourself drifting towards the um, the barriers. But when you do that mid drift, if you want to call it that, the car will suddenly kind of grip the road and then sort of send you in the opposite direction. It's hard to explain, but if you play this game, you'll I think you'll get what I'm trying to explain. It's not it's not a, a nice smooth cornering model like you might get in Sega Rally. I keep mentioning Sega Rally, I'm sorry, but uh, that's what I'm comparing it to just because it's an arcade racing game. Uh, so yeah, the, the handling model can be a little bit inconsistent when drifting around corners. That said, it is a very cheap game now, and it's probably one to check out if, you, if, you know, if you're a real big fan of rally games and you just want to play everything, then by all means give WRC Arcade, give it a go. Yeah, I'm going to come and give it a score now. I'm going to give it a score of 6 out of 10. One definitely for the more hardcore collectors out there. It has some nice features, but there's not a lot to it ultimately. The four game modes, seven cars and 14 tracks. 15 if you count the bonus track. So yeah, that's WRC Arcade for the PlayStation 1. I uh, hope you uh, stuck all the way to the end. I know my voice can be quite annoying. I'll let you into a little secret here. When I'm editing the podcasts, I can't stand my own voice. So how I'm going to get through this one listening to just myself, it's going to be quite painful. 
But if you've stuck to the end, I appreciate it hugely. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you'd like to give us a follow on Twitter, you can find us at Power Drift Pod, and all of our episodes can be found on your podcast service of choice or at powerdriftingpodcast.com. Again, thank you very much for listening, and I will see you next time. Finish!